uh, our next speaker. So, Irina Swanson from uh, Purdue will tell us about the uh, Uniform Art in Greece. Okay. Thank you so much for having me here. And I especially thank Juga Verma for organizing everything and putting so much effort into organizing this and just having the big vision for everything that we're doing. And this is not the only uh, course that we're doing in for tight closure. So I want to, uh, what happened? Sorry. What? Hmm. How do I get back to the, oh, somehow it scrolled way down. All right. So uh, I'm talking about uniform art and re -slama. And in blue there is something that, hmm, wouldn't that be nice to have? Let R be an Ethereum ring and N a subset, uh, a submodule of M. They're both finitely generated R modules. And is it true that there exists um, a positive integer K such as for all ideals I and all integers N bigger than or equal to K? We either have this um, uh, strong version of the Arden Reese lemma I to the N in, uh, times M intersected with N is equal to I to the N minus K times the sub, the module I to the K M intersected with N. So maybe we have this, or maybe we only have the, um, the, the weaker version. Um, and so we only have this inclusion here. God, oh, that's why it's not right. So maybe we only have this inclusion. Well, the way I wrote this right now, uh, neither of these two versions is true. And um, what happened here? Okay, done. Okay, so what is true is uh, this uniform Martin Reese lemma is true if we impose certain conditions. And uh, so Craig Hunecke wrote a paper, in, published a paper in 1992, and he proved that this is true if R is essentially a finite type over an Ethereum local ring, if R is F finite of characteristic P, or if R is essentially a finite type over Z. And uh, I cannot possibly go through all three of these uh, in the three lectures that I have, especially I cannot go through part three because that requires reduction of characteristic P. Um, but these three cases are not the only places where we have a, some version of a uniform art and Reese lemma. Uh, and there are some open parts, you can possibly prove another one, uh, but it is not true in the big generality. And um, so let's first talk about, I'll first talk about that, but before, I get to that. Um, let's uh, talk about the classical Art and Reese. I think we have to start with that. Uh, this was published by uh, uh, David Reese in 1956. And it was a lemma uh, inside a paper that he had um, for the proof of the crop. Uh, principal ideal theorem. And it was lemma one. And ever since then, this has been called a lemma, but it's a very important result. So uh, we are usually told that if something is a big result, we should call it a theorem. Uh, yet here we have a lemma and it's staying a lemma. I think maybe that's for affectionate, not just historical reasons. When you really like something, then you call it cute and little, even if it is giant and of big importance. Uh, and the reason it has the name Arden there, apparently, according to um, Eisen, David Eisenbutt's book, uh, uh, Commutative Algebra with a View Towards Algebraic Geometry, he has a footnote that uh, Emil Arden uh, lectured on this in the greater generality. So Art, uh, David Reese only proved it for rings. And uh, so um, there exists, he proved that there exists K depending on N and M, well, this is the general statement that we'll have, such that for all ideals I and for all integers N bigger than or equal to K, I to the N, uh, no, 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 no. This also depends on I. Um, I to the N M intersect with M is I to the N minus K 
I equivocate him and disagree with him. So David Rees only proved this in case uh, M is the whole ring and N is an ideal. And then Artin uh, lectured uh, in this generality. And uh, Matsumura uh, writes in the book that this was proved independently by uh, Artin and Rees. Okay. And we have all seen many uses of the Artin Rees lemma. So when you're doing completions, Hilbert, uh, Hilbert functions are, or um, the, well, you can, can be used to prove the current. Crow principal ideal theorem, Crow intersection theorem. Uh, we compare iadic topologies uh, with this. Um, it has also been used for existence of superficial elements uh, and sequences. The Brew Reese Zumi's theorem for comparing valuations to determine finite generation of ideal transform rings. This was in some lecture notes by Peter Schinzel. So there are many notes in exercise zero, which will not appear in the final version of this notes, but if you can give me other examples of uses of the classical art and Reese lemma, then I'll add them here and remove exercise zero from the back. Well, so this classical art and Reese lemma is already powerful, uh, but why would we want to have this uniform version um, where K doesn't depend on I? Well, um, the first time this appeared in print, but only as a question uh, was in a paper of Eisenbad and Hoxter. Eisenbad and Hoxter uh, posed it as a question. Uh, but they only want uh, said uh, when I varies over maximal ideal. And uh, they, in their paper, they were proving the <clears throat> the Zariski, one of Zariski's main lemma. So Zariski has several main lemmas. And in fact, there was a main lemma he had on holomorphic functions. Uh, we don't need to worry about what that is. Uh, but uh, Zariski had a main lemma inside there. And then again, another lemma, perhaps it should be a theorem. And Eisenbach and Hoxter then gave another proof in a greater generality, but they said, well, another possible proof would be if we had a uniform art and Reese of this form where the ideals could vary, vary over maximal ideals. And then that version was proved um, the weak form, which is all that was needed. Weak form was given by O'Carroll, Liam O'Carroll. Uh, that was in 1987. And, and in that paper, he used arbitrary M and N, but he used two prime filtrations, and we'll get to prime filtrations in the proof of the uniform version uh, of Hunicus as well. Um, and then uh, Duncan and O'Carroll had a paper um, two years later. Uh, they proved it um, in a strong form. So, 1989. All right. And then there was, I want to mention one more uh, thing. Um, uh, O'Carroll proved another uh, strong version, uh, and that was uh, later, I can't remember the year, and he proved it when I varies over principal ideal. And for this, he needed some primary decompositions of uh, what he was doing. Right. So, um, so this is what I'll say about the background. And now we will go towards proving um, the this uniform Arden Reese lemma. Well, we will only be proving the weak version. Oops. Uh, we'll only be proving the weak version. And um, and but I don't want to start with these restrictions here. I want to start with an arbitrary Ethereum ring and do as many reductions as I can until I'm forced to make some extra assumptions. So that's how we'll proceed. Um, 
now the story. Okay. So what we will do in the uh, in step one, step one, we will do a reduction to the case where M is the whole ring and N is a prime ideal. Perhaps it's not clear why we would want to do that, but in general, working with sub uh, the whole ring and uh, prime ideals or sub ideals in general is much easier than working with arbitrary uh, modules. Okay, so um, all right. So the first thing to do is uh, one part A is we do. <clears throat> N is a submodule of M, and let's call this L0, and we now form a prime filtration. And maybe we finish with L sub S. Okay. And so we have a prime filtration that means that for all I, the relevant LI mod LI minus one is isomorphic to R mod PI for some prime ideal uh, P sub R. So uh, I trust that you have seen this uh, before, so I will not go through the proof. Um, and then, what happened? Uh, one part, so still reduction, uh, to uh, M the whole ring. Suppose that if there exists K sub I such that for all ideals N, uh, I and for all integers N bigger than equal to K sub I, um, <clears throat> L sub I plus one I to the Okay, maybe I should call them because ideals are i, so indices should be j. Ideal i to the n times l sub j plus one intersect with l sub i. So if we know that this is contained in i to the n minus k sub i times l sub i, and this is for all, so we're doing j's here. And this is true for all j, for all j then it's an easy exercise that for all n bigger than or equal to the sum of these k sub j's i to the n <coughs> and for all ideals i i to the n m intersected with n intersected with n is contained in i to the n minus the sum of k sub j's uh, do I need an, no, no, that's it, um, LN. Okay. So if we have a prime filtration uh, and then if we can prove the result for each one of the uh, adjacent modules, then we know it also for the big chain, right? And then the final reduction is um, if uh, M mod N, so we reduce to the case with M mod N is isomorphic to R mod P and P is a prime ideal. Uh, and if there exists K such that for all integers N bigger than equal to K and for all ideals I, I to the N intersected with P is contained in I to the N minus K P, then we conclude that I to the N M intersected with N is contained in I to the N minus K P, uh, not P, um, uh, that is supposed to be N. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is, I'll actually prove this. So I'm going to go up here. This is our reductions. Okay, so proof uh, of 1C. 
proof of 1c. Okay. So uh, what we have is since m mod n is isomorphic to r mod p, we can write m as n plus r times some element x for some x in n, uh, no, x in m, such that um, uh, the set of elements, the ideal of elements that multiplies x into n equals p. Okay. So that, that thus we have uh, i to the n, m intersect with n. Well, i to the n, m is just n plus rx intersect with n. And now we use the following fact. If we have a plus b intersected with c, and if a is a subset of c, then this is just a plus b intersected with c. So we will use that up here. So this is just i to the n n plus i to the n x intersect with n. So now we have to work with this part. So let y, okay. Um, let y be in i to the n x intersect with n. So we can write y is zx for some z in i to the n. And then, uh, but Z also multiplies X, Z is an element of R, multiplies X into N. So Z is therefore in I to the N intersected with P, but by assumption, uh, where assumption here, this is in, i to the n minus kp. Okay. So that's where z is. So y, which is zx, is therefore in, um, so z is in i to the n minus kp, and then we still have x. But p times x, that's in n. Okay. So we proved this uh, with the one part c. So what we just accomplished, uh, I'll choose a different color for a different screen. What we just undo. What we just, why are you deleting things? Oh. Oh. We just reduced, Oh, I changed to red color, it didn't work. It only works in one screen, all right. So we may manage to reduce to this from now and we don't have to deal with arbitrary modules. We only have to deal with um, uh, the whole ring and a prime ideal inside. Okay, any questions about this uh, step one? Okay, then um, I guess I should undo, um, scroll. Now, um, okay, proof of 1C. All right, so now, done. So now let's go step two. I don't want red color. Okay, step two, what do we do in step two? Uh, 
oh, I skipped what is in my notes. Step one was a uh, reduction to faithfully flat extensions. Okay, so I'll write here. Um, okay. I'll write step zero or uh, is um, we may we may always pass to a faithfully flat um, extension. So if we can prove the uniform Martin Reese lemma and faithfully flat extensions, then it's true wherever we started. So now I'll call the new step to agree with the the notes on Moodle, I'll call this not step two, but step three. And so step three is a reduction to only using um, uh, I being just uh, a primary ideals, uh, ideals that are primary, ideals that are primary to um, maximal ideals. And maybe I should say something more about step zero. Step zero is trivial. So <laughs> I said a lot more. Go, so let's go back to step three. So uh, if we can work with M primary ideals, then we have a little bit of a power about uh, 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 understanding of primary decompositions and when we lift things from various parts, things will be, we can force things to be contained in those high dimensional, uh, or high height ideals. Okay. So this is a pretty, uh, an important step as well. So uh, first, um, let I be arbitrary, let I be an arbitrary ideal. Uh, then, if we need to understand this, well, uh, take an arbitrary maximal ideal, uh, actually. Um, let's take an arbitrary maximal ideal, raise it to the Lth power, so L could be large, and then raise this to the nth power. Oops, I don't need Ms and Ns anymore. I only need, well, I could just work with R's and P's, but it's fine if we have modules. <clears throat> okay, and this is true for all positive integers L and for all maximal ideals of the ring. All right, and what is true if we know um, the weak uh, uniform Arden Reese lemma um, for M primary ideals for, for zero dimensional primary ideals, then there exists a K, so there exists K that makes this intersection here it's contained still all, over all L and all, all M, that's containing I to them L N minus K times N. Okay. Uh, but then we can be generous, uh, this again L M. This uh, power here is contained in I to the N minus K plus M to the L. We're very generous, but it's okay because now when we <coughs> vary over all L and all N, uh, all maximum ideals M and all uh, exponents L, this is just I to the N minus K N. All right, so that, uh, that at least we have uh, only N primary maximum ideals, so accomplished we accomplish this part here. Any questions about this? Yeah. 
And so we're here. And so in particular, uh, without loss of generality, uh, we only take uh, I is primary to a maximal ideal. And we need to show uh, there exists, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, without last generality, we have to show that um, for all prime ideals P, uh, there exists a K such that for all primary ideals that are pri primary to maximum ideals, I to the N, such that for all N, um, this is containing I to the N minus K P. Now, we may be tempted to say, well, why don't we just localize? Um, what is true that if I is M primary, uh, then I to the N intersect with P is I to the N minus K P, if and only if it is true locally. Hmm. after localization at M. Uh, certainly if it's true globally, then it's true locally. Uh, if it's true locally at this uh, M and I is M primary, well, uh, globally, when we take this thing and this thing here and localize at any other prime ideal, uh, any other maximal ideal, if they don't contain I, then the left side is just P localized at that maximal ideal and the right, and so is the right side. So of course, this uh, equal, uh, inclusion here works, uh, works after localization anywhere else. So, well, this looks pretty promising. Um, so is it true that it suffices to prove this um, it suffices to prove this uh, reduction to using uh, um, the weak uh, Arden Rieslam uniform Arden Rieslam only after all the localizations. And that's not quite true because if you first localize at all these maximal ideals, then you get K that depends on this localization. And we want a global K that works before uh, localization. So what is really happening, um, so what we want is global K, but inclusion can be proved locally. And sometimes uh, locally, we have quite a bit more leverage for proving things. Okay. So um, excuse we need, me. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, Professor, I guess there is a correction here. It's pointed out by somebody in the chat. Uh, in the if and only if statement, when you're localizing. Yeah. Is it? Oh, oh the, right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so the intersection should be with prime ideal in the localization. Yes, this should be localization at M. Was that the question? Uh, uh, no, somewhere in the middle. Uh, it says intersect with R in R localized at M in the equation. Uh, no, this we need. Uh, oh, oh, here, yes, yes, thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alessandra. Okay. It's, now it might be true. Yeah, it's true. It better be true. Okay. Um, so the important thing is we need a global K. We can't just first localize, find a K. We need a global K, and then we can localize to prove this inclusion here. And then uh, another consequence 
Oh, this, oh, you, we can just prove things. Um, another consequence. Okay, here I can show more. Perfect. Okay. Well, it's no good spot. And here I can go up. Uh, another consequence is if you have to prove inclusion locally, then we may, in addition, assume that locally, so we find a global K, then we localize at a maximal ideal. We need to prove the inclusion there locally. And then now we use uh, the, that step zero that I forgot to say first, um, that, that locally we can pass to a faithfully flat extension um, as to get um, infinite residue field. So uh, I won't say much about this, but if you start with an Ethereum local ring, then you, you adjoin a variable X. And well, that's not a local ring anymore, but if you invert all elements that are not in the ideal extended, uh, the prime ideal extended from M, then now uh, localize it in X. This is a faithfully flat extension. And this ring here has infinite uh, residue field. And um, so maybe we want to prove something for all ideals in here. If we could prove that there exists, that this K, this global K here works uh, for the uh, uniform Arden Reese lemma after localization first in R localized at M, and then after passing to this, then we will know it also in the original ring. Okay. So what's the advantage of infinite residue field? Uh, advantage uh, reductions exist, minimum reductions exist. Well, with minimal reductions, um, that's, uh, why do we need minimal reductions? We're trying to prove the Art and Reese lemma. There are, there's nothing about integral closure there at all. And minimal reductions have to do with integral closure. However, at least in Hunica's proof, uh, and actually in his paper, he shows that this uniform Art and Reese lemma and uniform uh, integral closure inclusions are very tightly related. And we'll talk more about that. So uh, for now, let's just keep it at this and we will use it eventually. Any questions about this first? Okay, so let's go for step four. Um, well, step four says, um, reduction to minimal reductions. Okay, so this is two different meanings of the word reduction, um, except this is not quite true, not completely. We won't just replace, uh, so we already said, all right, we only need maximal uh, ideals that are primary to maximal ideals. We won't say now we only need uh, ideals that are minimal reductions of primary ideals to maximal ideals. So no, we, it won't be. So it won't be a complete reduction. However, it will be. Um, uh, it will be good enough for whatever we want to do. So um, here's a lemma. In my notes, it's lemma three point eight. And in Hunica's notes, it's lemma 3.1. In Hunica's paper, it's lemma 3.1. Uh, 
So let I, J, uh, P be ideals in the ring R. So this is global ring. I is contained in J and P is the prime ideal. Um, and let H and K be positive integers um, or at least not negative such that for all integers n, I will stop writing n bigger than or equal to k or n bigger than or equal to h because i to a negative power is the whole ring. So it all works. So for all integers n, we have two parts. One is j to the n intersect with p is in j to the n minus k p. So here you may want to think about j is probably, a read, oops, I said it the wrong way. Uh, J is um, J. A uh, J is a subideal of I, um, and J is uh, to some extent a reduction of I as well, not quite. But here I'm not stating that it's a reduction. But in the future, maybe we we'll want to think of J as a reduction. So here. Supposedly now we may have a, a uniform Martin Reese for this reduction idea, or maybe for all reductions. So suppose that we, we know uniform Martin Reese for J, and now we need to know something about I. Suppose that I to the N intersected with P is containing J to the N minus H plus P. Okay, so here, maybe we're getting a hint that J is not quite a reduction of I, but maybe J is a reduction of I mod P. So if this is true for all, uh, this part two is true for all integers, large integers N, that means that mod P, well, no, it doesn't quite say that, um, but uh, at least the mod P, something good is happening, all right? Um, and so uh, if we have these assumptions, so this is and, then what's the conclusion? I to the N intersected with P. So now we get the uniform Martin Reese for uh, ideal I, which might be arbitrary. That is in I to the N minus K minus H minus one P uh, for N, this is true for all N. Okay, so if we know it for this, well, maybe today's a reduction of some sort, then, uh, and we know some good relation between I and J, so these are assumptions one and two, then we will also know the uh, Martin Reese, a uh, uniform Martin Reese for arbitrary ideals. Okay, so proof. First, we claim that uh, for all N, I to the N is contained in J to the N minus H plus I to the N minus K minus H minus one P. And um, this, uh, the first N that we have to worry about is when N is K plus H plus one. So then this is just I to the zero and uh, i to the zero is just the whole ring. So this is just, um, this is assumption two. Right? So by assumption two, uh, this holds. So now we have a base case. If n is lower than that, then uh, it's still a base case. Uh, so if we know uh, the claim, for some n uh, bigger than or equal to k plus h plus one. Then, well, what about the next n? i to the n plus one. So since we know it, uh, let's see. So, um, so we, if we know it for some n, then we have this. J to the 
n minus h plus i to the n minus k minus h minus one p. And then if uh, I didn't need to, you have extra intersection. You wrote an extra intersection in two. Uh, intersection. There's no. Uh, so I'm assuming. I'm assuming this. Where's the intersection? This is in plus hypothesis, here. In hypothesis two, you don't have intersection. You don't need intersection. Right there. This is not an intersection. No. But you wrote I to the N intersect with P, I mean the left hand side. Uh, which part are you talking about? Yes. Uh, condition two of this M. Yeah, there's no intersection here. Uh, here there's, uh, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. There's no intersection here. Thank you. Yeah, there's no intersection there. Oh. Thank you. Who was that? Thank you. Yeah, I'm half. Even. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because otherwise this wouldn't be two over here, right? No, this wouldn't be two here. All right. All right. Um, so if now by assumption, we do have the base case because of the correction that, I, that we just saw. And now suppose that we we have induction step here. And then uh, let's multiply through by I. And then we get this. And we also know by, um, by part two, this is contained in J to the N minus H plus P. Um, so, oh, I see if I can, oh, let's see if I, I have more space here. Um, so we have, uh, uh, now this again, um, this part here is a sub ideal of the left side. So I can put this, uh, in here and then plus the intersection of the rest. Intercept of J to the N minus H plus B. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, no, 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 no. Um, this, because I have N plus one, here I also have to have N plus one, N plus one, except that I don't need that N plus one. Now I will be a little generous. This is contained in. Um, I to the end, so I keep copying this. And then over here, this is generously containing J to the N minus H intersected with J to the N minus H, uh, I guess like plus one plus B. Now this here is a sub ideal of that. So we get I to the N minus, oh, did I make a mistake? Oh, right, uh, I'm still just proving the claim. Okay, uh, N minus K uh, plus H P, and this is J uh, N plus one minus H plus the intersection of the rest, uh, intersected with P. And this here is by our assumption one, this is now contained in I to the N minus K plus H P plus um, J to the N plus one minus H plus 
j to the n minus h minus k d. Okay. So does that prove the claim? Uh, I to the n plus, so I'm going back here. I to the n plus one should be contained in j to the n plus one minus h plus i to the n plus one minus k minus h d. And that's, uh, well, it's, I need just one more line here. Um, j is a sub ideal of i. So this is a sub ideal of uh, i to the n minus k plus h d. Okay. So that proves a, a, a claim. Maybe I should go back to blue color. Okay. So now let's go back to, we really want to prove this, this inclusion then. Okay. So then, what do we have? Um, uh, I to the N intersect with P. Um, well, we use the uh, assumption two, this is containing j to the n minus h plus p intersected with p. Actually, uh, no, we, we will use the claim. What does the claim say? Um, the claim says that i to the n is containing j to the n minus h plus i to the n minus k minus h minus one P and we intersect that with P. And this again, uh, this is a sub ideal of P so we can pull it out. Plus the intersection of the rest. And now we use assumption one, this is contained in um, all right, so first I copy this. Uh, J to the N minus H minus uh, K D. And J is a uh, sub ideal of I. And anyway, this is contained in there. So we proved what we wanted. So this proves the lemma. So what this lemma will enable us to do is um, that, well, there are some times when so-called reductions or almost reductions will be the workhorse. And if we can prove it for those almost reductions, which we have to make more precise, then, um, then things will be pretty good. Okay. Now, um, this is, uh, I only have two more minutes. So let me finish. Um, so let's look at this um, assumption. I to the N is containing J to the N minus H plus B. So if we knew that, so this means that J, which is a subset of I, it, this is a reduction mod P. So, if, and if this is true for all N sufficiently big, uh, this means that we have a reduction mod P, right? So we do have a reduction. Well, um, so, well, why don't we always use reduction? The problem is that here, H perhaps depends on, on the reduction or at least on the ideal I. And then that would, not satisfy uniformity. So what I will make here is like a wish definition. And I think this really shows the power of how Hunica thinks. It's all reductions. And sometimes I, I imagine he has these wish definitions and uh, maybe they're true. And, um, and then he works with them. And well, when are those wish definitions true? And that's why the, the uniform binary uh, lemma doesn't work for all rings because these wish definitions are not always true. So um, 
for every positive integer, for every ring R and every positive integer K, uh, define T sub K of R to be <coughs> the intersection. You vary over all the ideals and over all integers N, you take the uh, integral closure of I to the N, and see what elements in R multiplied into the ordinary um, n minus k lower power of the ideal I. So that's T sub k. And then let's define T of R to be the union of all of these T sub k's. And uh, one big thing that King Hunick had to prove, and we'll get to it next uh, on Wednesday, is these T of R's are not always zero. In fact, they're not always contained in a minimal prime. They're, they can be pretty big. So this gives us like a uniform, um, um, what's a, a analytically unramified. So these rings have to be analytically unramified for these to exist. So a uh, uniform analytically unramified elements. Lm or something. Uh, I don't know. They he Hunikin did not name them. Right. So um so this is where integral closure does come in. Well, that's still not convincing that we will need it, but we'll get to it next time that it is indeed needed. Okay, I'll stop here. Are there any questions? Well, if there are no questions. Uh, thank you so much, Irina. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll see, see everybody. Uh, see you all Wednesday.